Hey folks, this is Vince with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to check out Bruin USA, a game that will be available on Kickstarter sometime mid-February 2015. So this game is for 3-5 to five players ages 13 and up, with the average play time being about 60 minutes. As the name implies, this game will task players with uh, brewing beer across multiple regions of the United States, and the player that can do that the most efficiently and earn the most victory points will win the game. So without further ado, let's take a brief moment to look at the game and see how it's played. Alright, now before we get started, it's important to stress that what you're looking at here is a prototype, meaning that it is not reflective of the final product. With that being said, I have to say my prototype here is fantastic in terms of quality. If the final production copy is anything like this, then I think you Kickstarter backers will be pleased. It's also worth noting real quick that the manual is about, I don't know, six, seven, eight, nine pages long, something like that, and it covers a lot of detail. So instead of going through all of that today, I'm just going to give you a very brief overview on how the game works, just so you can get an idea idea of whether or not it's a game that you'd like to play. Okay, so here's a quick look at your components. I do have some other components off camera like this huge bag of uncolored bottle caps. Uh, speaking of bottle caps, you've got two different types. You've got colored bottle caps and uncolored bottle caps. The colored bottle caps belong to the individual players, and players will be using these to mark their beers as they launch them across the various locations of the United States. You've also got these uncolored bottle caps, which are used by players to bid on ingredient cards. All right, now speaking of ingredient cards, that's what this large deck over here on the left-hand side is. You've got four main ingredients, grain, hops, water, and yeast. Now there are some other ingredients in here, um, pumpkin, you've got citrus, coffee. These are like special cards that allow players to perform uh, particular actions. Now you'll notice that there are numbers in the upper left hand corner of these cards. You've got one, you've got five. That will indicate that particular ingredient's quality value. And that comes into play whenever you go to launch a beer card. Now just to quickly take a look at this, you've got the name of the beer down here, you've got the number of points that this particular card will award you at the end of the game, and you've got the four different ingredients here along with their required quality value in order to launch that beer in the first place. Alright, now as I was saying before, I'm not going to cover all of the rules, but just to quickly sum up the game setup and the overall flow of play. Each player is going to get 15 of these uncolored bottle caps, and they'll also receive 5 colored bottle caps of a particular color. They'll also start the game with 3 of these beer cards and 3 of these ingredient cards. Alright, now the game itself is played over a series of rounds, and each round has three phases. You've got the ingredient auction, the launch a beer card or cards, and resolve brew fests. Now the first phase is very simple, the ingredient auction. The dealer at the time, and the role of the dealer will change from round to round, the dealer will go ahead and start drawing cards from this ingredient deck and creating separate pals like this. The number of pals that are available will all depend on how many people are playing the game. But he'll continue drawing cards from the ingredient deck until he draws a repeat of a previous ingredient in that stack. So you've got uh, two waters here, so he was drawing yeast, then water, then hops. He drew water again, so he stopped on that one and worked his way onto the next pile, and so on and so forth. And then players will go ahead and bid on one stack or one pile at a time with their uncolored bottle caps. And then a player uh, who bids the most on that particular stack will win it, and then that player will no longer get to bid for the remainder of that phase. Eventually, each player will have their own ingredient pile that they've won during this phase. Once each player has their own ingredient pile that they've won during the auctioning part, um, the dealer will go ahead and take all of the uncolored bottle caps that were used for bidding during that phase and scatter them across unclaimed locations on the United States. This will help uh, determine a particular location's market value, and that will come into play uh, during endgame scoring. The second phase, launching a beer, is very simple. Each player will take turns launching beers if they are able to, by looking at the cards in their hand and seeing if they have the required ingredients in order to launch these beers. So let's just say that this player here uh, took a look at his hand and said, okay, red ale, let's see if I have any cards for that. Uh, three grain, that works. Four hops, okay. One water, 
got one water, and one yeast. So he's got exact change here. Now, no bonus is given if you happen to use cards, uh, ingredients that are better quality than what you actually need. So in this case, you've got this red ale here. You needed three, four, one, one. You've got uh, three, four, one, one. So this, this is okay. So the player is going to go ahead and discard these ingredients and then put one of his colored bottle caps on the card like so, and then place it onto an unclaimed location on the United States. Now the player could uh, place it onto a claimed uh, location. If another player, for example, had, say, a beer at this location, this player could either place this onto an unclaimed location or try to initiate a brew fest and just kick the other player out. And that actually ties in with the third phase. But let's just say for right now that this player is just going to go ahead and place, uh, I don't know, this here. All right. And players will take turns doing that around the table until no one else can launch any beers. All right, now the third and final phase will only occur if there are any brew fests. Now that occurs whenever someone tries to launch a beer onto a location already occupied by another player. So let's just take the previous example. Let's say that Red tried to launch a beer onto this location and Green is already there. So there's going to be a brew fest. And this is where players will battle to, well, I don't want to say battle to the death, but maybe they'll uh, try and outbrew each other. Uh, the process, just to quickly sum that up, each player will choose so many ingredient cards from their hands and then add those values to their beer uh, quality here. And the player with the highest sum will end up winning that brew fest. Now let's say that the challenger had um, a higher value in terms of ingredients and the beer, and that would in turn kick green out of this location. Now the rounds will continue to play out until one player manages to launch three beers. At that point, the round will finish and then end game scoring will occur. Now just to briefly sum this up, once again, I'm not going over everything here. Um, players will take note of the numbers in the upper right hand corner of the beers that they've launched. That'll contribute to their overall point total. Uh, players will see who has the control over a particular region. Uh, in this case, you'll count the number of uh, bottle caps, number of beers that you've launched in this particular region, and that player will have controlled that region. Now, players will earn points based on the market value of that particular region. That's what these uncolored bottle caps are for. The more uncolored bottle caps you have in the region, the um, more points that you can earn because the market value is higher. So that's why it's important for the dealer to place these uncolored bottle caps onto locations where they think they may control some regions. Now, on top of that, there are some icons here that are colored on these different locations, like this one's orange and this one's red. If you happen to launch a beer that matches the color of one of those colored icons, the region point value is actually doubled. So it would behoove you to launch beers at locations that have a matching color. For example, uh, San Diego here has a green uh, colored icon here, and there is bitter here, which is also green. So the red player here would actually earn double from this region as far as the market value is concerned. Players also earn points for the cities they control, for any uncolored bottle caps they have left in their bank, that kind of thing. And after players have summed all of that up, the player with the highest point total will win. All right, and there you have it, a very brief look at Brewing USA. It's important to stress that I did not cover all of the rules found in the manual, but hopefully this will give you a brief taste, no pun intended, uh, as to whether or not you'd like to support this game. Speaking of which, the game will be available on Kickstarter mid-February 2015, so if you like what you see here, go check it out. Um, if you haven't already, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you can keep up to date on any new content I've been published. And if you want to learn more about this game, I have a written preview out there on my official website, www.dadsgamingaddiction.com. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.